Hi, this is Rainbow Harmony here to help you find balance and peace to live a more colorful life. And this is a pick a card reading on leaving a narcissistic relationship. And I decided to include John, my assistant, on this reading because um, we've been through this. <laughs> So, um, so many of you guys have been requesting this topic and I kind of put it off for a while just because it is really personal to me. Um, but I feel like I'm ready to talk about this. I, one of the reasons I started Rainbow Harmony was because ultimately I wanted to help people out of abusive relationships. And right now I'm working on starting a foundation that's actually going to be helping people physically and literally out of abuse. And I'm so excited. This is the whole reason I started the channel. And um, I figured might as well break the ice and kind of talk about this. And so I'm warning you guys, this could be a little triggering for some of you guys, you know, who are going through abuse or who have been through abuse. This is for those of you guys who are ready to leave your narcissist and who are, able, you know, trying to find a way. Um, and so let's get started. Um, go ahead and choose a number, number one, number two, or number three. And we're going to get you a personalized, unique message. But feel free to listen to all of them. There could be some stuff in all of these that apply to you. So this is leaving a narcissistic relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, for a lot of you guys it is, um, or it's um, like a coworker or like a best friend or somebody you grew up with or even your family. And so um, this is kind of a rough topic, you know, it's, it's never easy. So John, while I'm shuffling and getting the cards, can you talk about what a narcissist is? I mean, definitely Google it and look it up because that could be a whole other video, but maybe you can kind of help describe that while I'm shuffling. Yeah, um, okay, so so they talk about this uh, in like, in the psychology world, it's, there's a lot of debate about it, about whether or not this is a real thing. They have like a bunch of characteristics that they say, I think there's like nine. It's in the, it's in the DSM and, um, still. Yeah, in the five, I think. And um, there's a lot of debate though about uh, about how exactly to diagnose and what exactly that means and how permanent that is. But um, I think for the most part, what's most important is that it's not a label. It's not really black and white. It's not clear. It's not that easy to diagnose. But what you can really figure out is that this person is uh, somebody who is really not able to be ever present with you and how you feel. Um, they tend to be more worried about attention, um, about how, how they can get attention from you in both positive and negative ways. Um, they're kind of people who tend to, even uh, unconsciously, so it may not always appear consciously like they're happy about it, but that they actually do find um, gratification or pleasure or, or contentness in causing pain in the people around them. So um, there's that. Um, there's a lot of. I, I don't want. I feel like it's it's kind of. Um, the probably might f sound kind of vague, but generally you'll know this person is a narcissist because they really don't. They really don't want to change. Um, they really have no interest in change. They have a difficulty even perceiving that what they're doing is fake. Um, that they are. They may act fake and present a really fake-looking personality to you. But whenever you talk about it, they can't really grasp it. Um, it just doesn't even really seem like like what you're doing is helpful. So they may even seem attacked or defensive about it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's just, helping. Yeah, <laughs> they just completely lack empathy. This is somebody who lacks empathy. Yeah. Um, they tend to have an air of superiority about them. But um, so some people think narcissism means that this is somebody who's like obsessed with themselves and like. Um, but usually and like usually it's because on the inside they are wounded and they're hurt and they have a lack of self-love And so when you don't love yourself, it's really difficult to be able to love the people around you So these are people that don't love unconditionally. They, they love conditionally um, These are the types of people in relationships that cheat on you that gaslight you that provoke you um, that bully you that abuse you physically mentally emotionally um, sexually um, oftentimes the abuse is very emotional and psychological. They kind of beat you down over time and they make you doubt yourself. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else. It is kind of hard to put your finger on the, this abuse and that's why it's important to research it. So maybe pause this video and research 
what is narcissism, what is narcissistic abuse, what is narcissistic, narcissistic, I can't say it, <laughs> what is narcissistic personality disorder, and um, that will kind of help you realize. Chances are, if you clicked on this video, then you know you're aware that you're yeah. with a narcissist. Yeah, I'll and you're and so we're not going to spend a lot of time, more time explaining it, but yeah, it's it a horrific it. type of abuse because it slowly eats away at your soul over time. I've I've heard some people, this is a really horrible way to, to say it, but some people have called this type of abuse soul rape. And so they're basically taking away your light and your soul. And the thing is, as us empaths, we are so light, we're so sensitive, we're so kind, we wanna heal people. And unfortunately, we tend to attract a lot of narcissistic, narcissistic people because they're like moths to a flame with yeah. people like us. And so I, I have clients all the time that are telling me, why do I keep attracting these assholes? Or people keep telling me my parents are harsh with me. They, no matter what I do, they're not happy. Um, or they scream and they yell at me, but then they're nice and then they buy things for me. Um, they, they get jealous of me. Um, just like weird, just weird stuff. When you know that someone isn't on your side, when you know someone gets pleasure out of causing you misery, that's the thing is the narcissist basically gets off the only thing that gives them happiness is putting other people down. So these are your classic bullies. Um, and oftentimes these are people that you're close to. Unfortunately, I, I had narcissistic, just lots of people from all over different facets of my life. And it just seems to be part of the path. I, I'm surprised, most people have encountered a narcissist. Um, if you, and narcissists don't have the ability to self-reflect. So these people don't change. That's how you know you're with a narcissist because you keep telling them over and over what you need to change and like they just don't. And um, it can be confusing because sometimes they're, they wear a mask and they're really good at faking like they're in love or they know how to play the game and how to like make you feel better. But there's like a cycle of abuse. As soon as like you are feeling better and like they've got you back on top of the world, they just take you back down. So there's always this sense of having to watch your back around them. There's always this like other shoe drop feeling. And it really is a roller coaster. And sometimes these are the hardest relationships to leave because you end up getting addicted. That's the thing is you can become addicted to the narcissist and the addicted to the abuse. It's like a rush. Like when you watch a, a television program that has drama and suspense and stuff, it actually produces these chemicals in your body that make you become addicted to it. And so <laughs> yeah, and I've been through that where I've been like addicted to the narcissist. And I, also, I also think too, the, the hard part with leaving a relationship with this is um, really recognizing the scary part, which is because they are so talented at um, kind of changing who they are to fit a situation, to, to slander other people, to manipulate, to um, use their words against you and to use other people against you, yeah. to isolate you. Um, by the time you're ready to leave, um, you're terrified. Um, you and you don't, just don't have any energy, you know, you're just exhausted. You don't know what would happen. You don't know what could happen. You don't yeah. know what they could do if yeah. you actually did leave because um, they, they, they make it their plan to make sure that you don't want to and they're and, very yeah. good at that. And they basically run a smear campaign against you to get other people around you to doubt you. They crazy make you so you start to feel like you're the one that's crazy, yeah. you're the one that's too sensitive. You're the one that is the problem. Overreacting. Overreacting, yeah. your drama, you're exaggerating, all this stuff. We'll get into it. Yeah. So, <laughs> can you guys tell, like, we've been through this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, sorry the light in here is so bad. It's it's the sun setting, and we're just trying to find the best light for you guys. But anyways, hopefully that's okay. So let's go ahead and draw the cards. Please look into it. We could talk about it forever, but... Um, this is about, about getting out of the relationship. When you know, I'm ready to get out, I don't care what it takes. I wanna tell you guys, oftentimes you're gonna to have to leave not just the narcissist behind, but a lot of people behind. You, have, you need to cut yourself off from everybody who knows that person and who takes their side because people will take sides. And that's the saddest thing is oftentimes the victim is left standing alone. But it's worth it to just cut out anybody that you know, doesn't believe you. Yeah. Or anybody who, when you talk to them about what's going on, uh, well, yeah, like you said, they take their side. They think, oh, they're they're a great guy. You can or, never be like that. Or yeah. Even if they don't take your side, they might actually be judgmental of you and critique you on, on um, maybe your personality because you're maybe you're oh you're leaving this guy like you're you're so mean or 
or you're so irresponsible. Might or think it's your fault. It's or... a bad idea. What about the kids? What about yeah. the job? You know, and and if somebody's really, really your friend, they're gonna be like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna help you get out of this because that guy's crazy or that girl's crazy or or whoever it is. Yeah. Um, that's the right response. <laughs> yeah. So um, those of you guys choose number one, two, or three, and those of you guys who choose number one, um, let's see what your cards have to say. First of all, they're saying yes, you need to take a new path. Um, and then this is like the twin flame card reversed. And so some people do get confused and they, I have a lot of people who hit me up thinking that they're, someone's their twin flame, but then it turns out it's just a narcissist and they're just like addicted to them. And it's just because there's the whole runner and chaser and like there's, they think like, oh, there's all these signs, but it actually is just someone who's really narcissistic and somebody who's leading them on and someone who can't commit. And so they're saying, maybe you thought this was some like your twin flame or something. But they're saying this is somebody you need to move on from for others of you guys i do see if you chose number one some of you guys chose number one regarding your family or like a best friend or something so i'll kind of keep that in mind too but basically they're saying yes you need to leave this behind you need to take a risk you need to take a leap of faith i remember telling one client once her situation was so bad i was like honey you just need to get as much money as you can hop on a bus and get the f out of there like the universe will provide obviously be logical and you know, make take calculated risks here. But all I know is that you, if you really are in an abusive situation, the universe is gonna conspire to help you out of it. It's just, it's gonna be one of the toughest decisions you could ever make to get out of this. And they're actually saying, stir the pot. There's like, start planning and start thinking of different ideas of things you can do once you're out of the abuse or like to get out, like start basically creating an exit plan. Be a multitasker. Yeah, start creating an, an exit plan um, from this relationship or from this family or from this friend, um, you know, and don't tell them, you know, you can't reason with this person. So you can't sit down and tell them, I'm thinking about breaking up with you because they're gonna try to keep you from doing that. You can't tell your parents like, I'm thinking about moving to this other place. Um, you know, what do you guys think? Great. It's, you're just gonna have to pretend like everything's fine and just kind of go along with their game. And nothing important happening here. Yeah, everything's fine. They might it's ask, meaningless. It means oh, you to just me. took on two jobs. What are you doing with all that money? Hide the money, hide, like seriously, hide the money. Like you might have to open a secret bank account. This is like some real shit here. Um, you know, you might need to, kind of keep your cards close to yourself. You might need to take on work that they don't know about. Um, and you, you need to not tell them your plans. You basically just need to get as far away from them as you can. Some of you guys are gonna have to contact a lawyer and um, since there was so much betrayal and backstabbing and abuse here, it's not gonna be hard for you to be able to win in this trial. And um, the narcissists do make this whole court process the worst thing. Some of you guys might just need to, to, to uh, kind of cut your losses and let the narcissist have it all and just run and then just maybe later send the divorce papers over or whatever. You might need to, to just try to, they're gonna fight for everything. They're gonna take everything. If there's children involved, um, you need to try to gather some evidence of proof, yeah. proof of their abuse. And so you need to be careful, you know, as to how you're being guided to do that, but you might need to gather some proof. Yeah, be careful, take, take precautions, obviously protect yourself Yeah. first. You can't help others if you're not taking care of yourself. That's how it's always got to work that way. Yeah. Always got to take care of yourself, protect yourself. Um, but uh, in these cases, when you're leaving this person um, in, that you're involved with, may or may not understand uh, that there's a whole you do you thing. They, they may not really understand why you're doing it. They may see it as an attack and they'll use um, everything they can to try and correct your behavior, to try and change who you are back into the person that they need you to be. They act like they own you. <laughs> and, and when it comes to the law, um, unfortunately, it's, it's really easy to, um, to get a hold of, to get into a bad situation if one of two things, you, you're not supplying enough proof and you actually supplied um, the law with some kind of an evidence that you retaliated in any way. Retaliation against uh, somebody who's got narcissistic personality disorder is just going to worsen things. It's gonna make you look like the crazy it's one. It's best to just hold the light, have yeah. integrity, hang on to your truth, be gentle and kind and generous with them whenever you absolutely have to in those situations.
don't obviously don't give them supply, but um, but make sure that if you're separating and you're disconnecting ties, that you um, you keep track of your <laughs> your receipts, all of your proof, take pictures, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I do see there's going to be divine intervention because in the end, the truth always prevails. The sad thing is, is a lot of times in court and stuff like that, there's not usually justice because the court tends to side with the abusers. It's just kind of how it is right now, which is sad. And that's kind of why here at Rainbow Harmony, I really want to spread light on that. And I really want to help with that and be able to help people um, in that way. But um, I'm seeing that there will be divine intervention and to be honest this person's gonna get their karma They're gonna get their karma from what they did. You might not see that they that they're having to pay for this But you know, it's like being a narcissist. You already live a miserable life being it like they're not gonna be able to get away with this for long the older the narcissist gets, the more narky they get, the more they start to expose themselves and I really do believe in the end people will expose themselves. So do you want to hit the lights? Thanks. Oh god, I hope this isn't awful lighting. <laughs> oh. There's my light. <laughs> it's not my light. Um, anyways, so there. this is talking about justice, actually, and I, I think I kind of want to read this. Oh wait, I don't have my book with me. I'm so sad. Oh well, whatever. I'll just use my intuition. <laughs> um, they're saying in the end, justice is always served. Everybody's... Um, creating their own path through their thoughts, through their choices, through their intentions, through their actions, and you reap what you sow. And so the hardest thing is, is you want to serve justice. You want to see them have to pay for it, but you might just have to run. You're not the one who's supposed to serve them justice. You're just supposed to bow to your path and move on. And, um, and I do believe justice will be served for you. And so they're saying this is a huge challenge in your life, trying to get, obviously, trying to get away from this narcissist or from these narcissists. And, um, and I'm seeing there will be a time of rebirth. Um, and the thing is, what, what was some of the amazing things that happened in your life after you got away from the narcissists? Um, well, I was going to say when you pulled the, the twin flame card reversed, yeah. um, I, something popped into my head and I was thinking the energy of, of this person in your life is uh, no matter what, whenever you interact with them on, a, on an, any kind of intimate level, Anytime you share with them um, kind of your, your life or your, your energy, um, they are going to reject it. Um, they don't want intimacy. They don't want yeah. that. They don't want real, genuine connection. And so, um, as a result, in order to survive in the relationship, you have to reject yourself. In order, yeah. in order to survive in the relationship, you have to give up your sole purpose. You can't be who you truly are around and these so, people. And so, as a result, you just sit there um, suffering. And every every time you attempt to regain ground, to renew your purpose, to renew your passions, um, you'll you'll get knocked down over yeah. and over again. Yeah, it's true. And so, after you got out of your narcissist of, of relationships, what? amazing things happen in your life like what kind of rebirth did you experience well I feel like out of any kind of um, separation like that um, even just the same as in, in a regular relationship after a separation of like a romantic relationship anywhere where you have like your primary primary relationship it could be my parents it could be my my old um, ex-girlfriends and stuff like that um, I'm not pointing anybody out in specific <laughs> but um, Generally, there's a cycle of re-identifying with yourself. Yeah. Um, you find connection with, with who you really are. Um, but the problem is, is um, the first stage usually involves a lot of grief, a lot of pain, yeah. and sadness, and depression as you realize um, how exactly you brought that into your life. Um, what and that's what this card is about. This yeah. card is about the grief and the pain and like the loss that you go through. But eventually you do get to this point where you start to feel better and for me like I started discovering like all of these talents and things that I, I had going for me when I was younger that I completely just threw away because the narcissist made me feel like I was nothing like the narcissist I encountered on my path basically got me to this place where I was so self-conscious and I was so insecure and I seriously believed that like I literally believed I 
You were guilty. You believe that crazy. you were guilty of all the things that yeah. they accused you of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they project all of the ugliness that's in them. They project it onto you. So I thought I was a failure. I thought I was a fuck up. I thought I was good for nothing. And and I just thought that I was just gonna live this basic life and that I was just gonna like do nothing. And <laughs> it was just so sad. And so I started discovering that I love to sing. I, I started writing again. I started going out in nature and like, it was so overwhelming going out in nature because I felt like all the love and um, I just was able to wake up and not feel like I had to look over my shoulder every day, which I did for months, almost like a year after I got out of my narcissistic relationship. I was still terrified. Every morning when I woke up, I was just like, oh my God, where am I? Are they gonna come to me? <laughs> and so I started feeling like so much better and I started, um, obviously I started Rainbow Harmony, I started doing fashion styling, you guys know I talk about that on the channel all the time, and I think it was truly going through all that shit that eventually ended up connecting me with like my passions and the things I love. I would never give credit to the narcissistic people that I came in contact with along my path, but I do give myself credit for the choices I made to, to, to like learn from that and to heal from that, and it also helped me kind of get rid of like old habits too. Like I used to gossip a lot and I think I used to really be addicted to the drama and the chaos that came with the narcissist, which is really natural over time. And I was able to kind of rid myself of all that toxicness because once I realized I learned about narcissists and learned about their toxic behaviors, I was like, oh shit, like I totally picked a bunch of this up. And so I kind of cleansed myself of that and then bam, I started manifesting all of these amazing things into my life. I started getting money. I started getting opportunities and I really think it was just because I wasn't surrounded by that toxic energy anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're saying don't give this relationship a chance because how are you going to attract good things into your life when you're surrounded by poison? And they're telling you to free yourself. So how do you free yourself from the narcissist in this context? Um, I'm not getting any specific details about the situation but I do yeah, feel same. like um, this particular person is not someone to be messed with so yeah um you have to be careful the difficulty in this it, it really comes down to how 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 intertwined your life is with them and the difficult part is is there's no there's probably going to be a, it's it's probably going to be so difficult to actually start disentangling without them feeling that yeah um and so it's like an energy thing. It's got to be something that you you really have to work hard and work fast with these situations. You might just um, have to kind of like run away. If you don't have <laughs> if you don't have anybody else that you can count on to give you some space to And oftentimes you don't because the narcissist away. kind of yeah. cut you off from everybody. If you don't have that then um it, it yeah, I mean it really just depends on your situation, but to be honest, you have to work hard, you have to work fast. You have to take a risk because uh, this is too dangerous. You will continue to lose energy to this person. Yeah, and energy will, vampires. And the longer you stay, the less motivated you will be to get out of it. Yeah. Um, it will constantly be a drain. And so it's just, it's, it's not, there's no other way but to just do it. Yeah, that, you know, and it's worth it. You know, I, at one point, I had to be on food stamps. I, I was homeless. I um yeah. I was uh, you know whatever it takes you have to value anything yourself. is better than being with a narcissist and that that's the point I got to where I was just like I don't give a shit anything's better than this and yeah. I need to like get out of this you have to value your 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 purpose and your your plan and your value for for other people you have to put those things above this relationship yes um, the universe will support you yeah. I swear like it, miracles will happen people will come across your path but Remember, we talk about this a lot. One of my favorite spiritual guides, Dorian Virtue, says, first you take action, then the help comes, then the support comes. So you might just be called to take a risk and take a leap of faith. And that's what that, um, where is it? That's what this card is about. It's like saying, don't plan this out. Like really just, you might need to just not overthink this and just take a risk. And then the last card here um, is just saying, there's a whole world out there for you. And if you have nothing else to motivate you, just know that there's a beautiful world out there. And um, I really just was giving up on life when I was entangled with a narcissist. And now I'm feeling so happy and so free and so blessed. And it's never too late to start over with your life and to, 
take a second chance and um, and I think the universe is offering this to you so we're sending you so many prayers and so many blessings yes. and um, we really hope that this will help you so are you fanning yourself yeah it's so hot you guys we're like in 104 degrees we don't have any air conditioning <laughs> Well, we do, but it's absolutely obnoxiously loud. It's so, yeah, he's like pointing at it. It's it's so obnoxious and it's loud, and so we can't put it on during the reading. <laughs> so we should make this the cover photo. All right. Uh... <laughs> All right, so number two, if you guys chose number two. Um, so the first thing I'm getting is release your ex. <laughs> So maybe some of you guys have already stepped out of this relationship, but you're like attracted to this person still. And that's really normal. That's so normal to like date someone who's a narcissist and then to just like wish that you could have them back. Once again, it's because you get addicted to them chemically because there's like this rush involved with the narcissistic relationship because it's really passionate at first and really intense. I mean, usually in the beginning when this person comes on to you, they love bomb you and they just like, yeah. they come at you and it's just like really intense. And so you can get um, really addicted to that. Um, some of you guys, once again, this is family or friends because I am seeing for some of you guys, this could be like a narcissistic father in particular. Um, someone that, you know, raised you but wasn't there for you or like abandoned you or who like screwed you over in some way. I think what I'm reading off this card is that like it was hard because they acted like they cared for you. They were really good at putting on that act, but secretly they loved to bully you and they loved to put you down and they picked on you. Maybe some of you guys were the scapegoat, which is really confusing because usually the narcissist in a family dynamic will pick one child to really put the brunt of the abuse on. Um, and sometimes it's their spouse too. Um, but, um, they'll pick one child. And so then you'll have another child that's called the golden child. And there's like, look up dysfunctional families. Um, but you know, this child isn't experiencing the same thing as this one is. And so you might be fighting with your siblings or with cousins or whatever about, um, you know, that this happened, this was abuse and they don't believe you or they defend the abuser. Um, your other parent might defend the abuser. Maybe it's both of your parents that are narcissists. And so that can just be really complicated because you're in this situation where um, there's just no hope and you might be having to leave multiple people behind. For some of you guys, this could be a best friend too, someone that you were with for most of your life. And over time, this person's gotten increasingly jealous increasingly controlling um, you know and I always tell people if you want to know who the narcissist is look who isn't happy and who isn't clapping when you're being successful if you put on like a cute outfit and you're looking hot and you know damn well you look good and you turn to your best friend and you're just like what do you think and they just kind of have this weird look on their face and they're not like <laughs> applauding you then it's especially like especially if it's not just you but like most everybody they are not happy for like yeah. if they have a hard time not being the person who's leading the conversation. Yeah, yeah. So like this is kind of the energy I'm seeing here for a lot of you guys. This is like a lot of people in your mm -hmm. life. This could be your family and your friend. And like like maybe what happened to me where it was pretty much almost everybody in my life. And I was just like, what the fuck? I, I, um, I get a feeling too off of the cards that you're saying that this person is someone who... Uh, and, and obviously lots of people with this... Um, this this uh, disorder kind of share the same tendency but I feel like this is a really strong aspect of their energy and that's the idea that they um, they are trying to teach you all the time um, teach you by punishing you mm -hmm. and by trying to basically um, the tough part with with these relationships is that you'll never be enough mm -hmm. that um, no matter what it is that they ask you to do, even if you did it and you did it perfectly, they still will find something else to add on top of that to say how you didn't meet their expectations. And I feel like this whole teaching idea too is, is that um, this person justifies how they cause uh, suffering in your life as using it as like what people would say is like a, a teachable moment you know what I mean in a situation where where normally the person would would treat you with gentleness and generosity and understanding that you might make mistakes uh, they want you to kind of drown in it and they want you to 
and, and it's really honestly to just justify them neglecting the the relationship or yeah. or actually being supportive and, and kind to you they just don't want to devote energy to other people when they don't when they don't feel like it and so yeah. they'll rationalize it by saying um, you have to learn yeah yeah <laughs> Um, this is actually saying, you know, look at all these spears here. It's like everyone's coming at you. So for those of you guys who chose number two, I feel like there's more than one narcissist in your life. For a lot of you guys, it's a narcissistic family. We did see the release your ex card. There could be some of you guys that are wondering about, should I go back to my ex? But it turns out they're a narcissist and you shouldn't go back. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the only love you know. It's just like kind of the codependent toxic love. And it's so easy. It's hard to understand love and until you've had the real thing, you know? And so basically this is saying, maybe this is all the members of your family here, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your parents, siblings, who are trying to like come at you. And, um, and here you are standing alone and you're, you're the one that everyone always kicks and you're the one that you know, everyone kind of always puts down and you're the one that um, you feel like you have to defend yourself. Everyone, you're the butt of everybody's jokes or mm -hmm. something. And so this card is actually saying you're challenged to stand by your beliefs and your values. Do not be afraid to personally defend what must be defended. Only by being assertive will you win the day. Trust your judgment and intuition and believe that, even if the situation looks forbidding and difficult, you will know how to handle it. Remember that the difference between a hero and a heroine and a coward is that the former goes forward in spite of fear. There's also a message here that says, um, hang on. Okay, so if justice is not easily forthcoming, you will resolve all difficulties alone. So it, it makes it seem like you're gonna have to stand alone on this and you might have to leave and go off on your own. And this is really difficult. I've talked to a lot of people who have narcissistic families, even in some cultures where it's not normal to leave your family. Yeah. Some cultures you stay with your family and you get married and you stay in the same house or you live near them or you, you provide for your family, you help them when they get older. And so it's, and if they happen to be really abusive and narcissistic and toxic, basically, you know, you need to take care of yourself no matter what your culture says. No matter what, I mean, I think all cultures, for the most part, it's weird to kind of step away from your family. Um, yeah. Especially if there wasn't physical abuse. Um, I see a lot of people that have like extreme emotional, mental, psychological abuse, and they're just wondering, well, they haven't hit me, so how, I guess I can't leave. But I'm like, no, like you should leave if you're being physically, emotionally, psychologically abused. That's to me is the worst kind of abuse because yeah. that takes your soul from you. And and you have to recognize too that that it's your right to separate yourself from that situation for as long as you need. Yeah. And to not need to explain yourself. Yeah. For why you're doing it and to just ask that that be respected and for your decision to be respected and to have them trust. If anybody's questioning you, to just say, you know what? Um, I need you to trust that I can handle my own life. Yeah. That I know what to do with my own situation. Yeah, it's your life. And um, and if you feel like actually returning at some point, that's up to you. Obviously, not always recommended. No. But um, especially, I think what this is getting at though is more about the the group of people that you're around. Because yes. the problem the problem a lot of times is you can enter into a relationship while everything is going fine. Um, you might have some some insecurities or things that may have brought you into that relationship in the first place, you know, codependency and that kind of stuff. But but you may not have felt like when you entered into that relationship that you had the same problems as when you left. Um, you know, insecurities and lack of confidence and self-esteem and, and all those things that they may have actually um, put on you as a role to play. And so when you took on that role to play, um, and you start going out and hanging out with your friends and stuff, your friends may have noticed, hey, something's off, and all of a sudden they started treating you the same way. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden you're, you're playing the same role with everybody. Um, you may have even left a lot of your friends and made friends with this partner or with this, this uh, abuser, and as a result you don't have anybody else to lean on um, because, you know, it, it just... It's the role that you took on. Yeah. And so now it's time to be yourself. It's I time think to be on your own. I think that's what this card's talking about with being assertive because sometimes being assertive is not explaining yourself to people. And that that's the thing is people are like, I want to leave, but like, I just don't know what to say. I don't know how to explain myself. And I'm like, well, guess what? You don't have to explain yourself. You can just leave. Yeah. And sometimes there's, I always tell people you can't argue with crazy. 
Yeah. And narcissists are crazy, and so you can't argue with them. You can't make a point to them. They're always right. They always twist it around and make you wrong. So yeah. you might just have to kind of walk away from that. And that's the thing too. I want to say one last thing before you go into the next one is. Yeah. Oh is, wait, um, I know. I, I'm still on this. Oh, one. you're still on. Okay. Yeah, I got. Um, I got a lot of cards. <laughs> this is gonna be a long reading. <laughs> so um, that's the thing is is, there you'll know, you'll know, that it's time to leave without explanation because you'll have already tried to explain yourself and no matter and, and you always read if you know about narcissistic personality disorder you know how this happens you go into the situation thinking you're going to explain um, what you're going to do and you're just gonna do it uh, or you're just gonna tell them what you're gonna do and then you end up explaining yourself over and over again and trying to justify why you're doing it and yeah and then all of a sudden you feel guilty and you walk away feeling like you're the one that messed up <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like wait what the just fuck happened? just happened? It's called um, gaslighting. So look up gaslighting, please. So, uh, Everybody who's watching this, if you don't know what that means, look up gaslighting and narcissism. So yeah, like you'll 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 know when it's time to leave and not explain yourself, because you'll you'll have already had those kinds of conversations and nothing has changed, um, and that's that's definitely uh, confirmation that you keep it to yourself. Just get your bags, get your money together, Just get another go. job, don't tell anybody where you're going, just get out of there. Yeah. And so, um, what I'm seeing here is that you're really unhappy. This is the sun card. If you stay with the narcissist, this is all you're going to get. Everything's going to backfire and your manifestations are not going to come out clearly. The universe will be generous with you if you leave. There's going to be so many opportunities. They're saying you're frustrated because you feel so insecure at this point. The narcissist has broken you down so hard that you're like, I don't even know if I can do a job interview. I don't even know if I can just like put my makeup on and just go walk down the street. Some of you guys are agoraphobic and you can't even leave your house. And I know what that's like. Um, they're saying there's going to be like a true twin flame, a true soulmate coming onto your path. Your, your passions will be ignited. And for me, it was only a couple weeks out of my narcissistic um, relationship where I started to feel like myself again. I was like, oh my God, all that time, I thought that all that anxiety, all that depression, everything I had, I just thought it was my fault and, and just random. And it turns out it was just because I was surrounded by really jerky people. I even saw um, this meme online that said, before you like diagnose yourself with depression, ask yourself if you are in fact just surrounded by assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started getting a lot, I mean, of course it's taken a long time to get better and rehabilitate from that, but I got significantly better even just a couple weeks after. Mm -hmm. And then they're saying you're a shaman, you're a teacher, you're a guide, you're a healer. And many, and for many people, these initiation. narcissistic yeah, relationships are your initiation. And so many of us, you know, do believe that you choose the family that you come down to or the, the relationships that you enter into your life or um, the friendships you're going to have. And so it's like you, uh, from one school of thought, it's almost like you chose before you came here in order to be in these situations in order to, for them to be the catalyst to you yeah. being able to step into your purpose. And for me, that's what happened. Once again, I would never thank the narcissist <laughs> for everything I have. I know it's the choices I made, but... At this point, um, a couple years narcissist free. I, you know, I have two successful businesses. I'm traveling the world. I'm, I'm feeling happy. I'm like grounded in each moment, and I'm really able to celebrate and embrace each day. And so, from homeless to on top of the world in a couple years, simply because I just decided to leave my narcissist all behind. And so, um, maybe you're going through this for some higher purpose. So don't feel like you're just a victim to circumstance. I do tell people in order, before you become a survivor, you must first become a victim. So the victim stage in this whole thing is extremely important. Don't just rush yourself into being a survivor and getting over it. You need to really spend time feeling that pain, but you need to do that away from the narcissist. So right now, put yourself in the survivor mode, get your ass out of there, and then you can kind of go through that depression and victim process. Mm -hmm. and. I know this is like that. the cheesiest, cheesiest metaphor, but um, I've been thinking a lot about this lately because I've been working with some jewelry stuff. But um, metaphor here is, you know, these processes put you through really dark places, and you'll be going through um, a, an experience that, at the end of it, um, and after you look back, after some time has passed, that perspective just doesn't really seem approachable to you right now. Yeah. You'll be looking outside and just thinking like, I don't know how to get that far. It seems so far from where I'm at. 
and the experience is just going to feel really, really negative. Um, it's going to feel like a big loss. It's going to feel like yeah. a waste of time, a waste of energy. But, You're going to be um, like, what happened to my life? What happened to my youth? <laughs> right? But um, the metaphor, the cheesy metaphor that I have is for how, um, how when, when you're trying to, uh, well, basically purifying metals. Um, in order to purify metal, you heat it up. And all the other stuff, all the gunk, um, as it gets heated up, burns or gets, you know, moved up to the top and skimmed off. And what's left over is the good stuff. And so these processes that you're going through where you, where you feel like you might be suffering and, and just going through such an awful time, this is a time where you're being stripped down to really the core of who you are, to yeah. realize what your purpose is here. And these experiences are here to really build you into the, the, the person, the, the, the spirit that you, you were meant to be here when you, when you came down. Wow, that was not cheesy at all. That was, be that was beautiful. <laughs> like I felt that on a deep level. I love that. It's so true. Um, this is saying that you're unhappy. And um, a nice we saw the frustration card. Um, there is a light guiding you though. There's a reason you're walking this path. And so if you just realize there's a purpose to all of this, and I remember telling myself that. I was like, there's got to be a reason I'm going through all this shit. This just seems like just so bizarre. And I was like, once I became conscious I had been through all that abuse, I was just like, holy F, like there's got to be some reason and so search for the reason search for your truth this is going to lead you on the path of your truth and oh my god thanks that feels so good <laughs> he's like fanning me <laughs> fan me and feed me grapes i'm <laughs> just kidding <laughs> we actually do have some grapes <laughs> just kidding um and so they're saying once you get out of this then the snow will be able to thaw and you'll be able to look ahead and see like what the future has for you um, but you just need to get out just like the first mm -hmm. message you need to get out of this and we're praying for you and we're sending you so much love and light and mm -hmm. hopefully in the future when my organization's running strong I can help those of you guys uh, that need help but what I'm realizing is you need to help yourself and there were people that came across my path to help me like angels that I was like earth angels I call them um, like pe therapists and counselors and kind people like John and um, you know, nice, authentic friends and people I made, but uh, friendships I made, but mm -hmm. it was me in the end that had to pull myself out of it. And so, unfortunately, there's no one who can really rescue you but yourself. And that's going to give you some really lot of strength and empowerment mm -hmm. once you can look back and realize, I made it through that. I'm a survivor, yeah. you know? So, um, those of you guys... I'm gold. Gold. <laughs> those of you guys who choose number three, um, they're saying yes um this person's a narcissist because you're you're wondering like is this a narcissist or have i been through this am Maybe, i crazy am i crazy <laughs> um and yes you know and i highly suggest that you start researching this more on youtube and like you look into it there's a lot of people talking about it i always tell people only trust the people that are talking about this that really resonate with you and that don't trigger you. Some people who are talking about it are really angry <laughs> and are really like, it's just intense. And so there's so many different people talking about this, you know, go ahead and um, watch people who have personal stories. Make sure you're watching like actually accredited therapists and counselors talking about it too, to get the real info. Yes. Yeah, yes. which is very important. Because they have so many, 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 uh, this is my opinion. They have so many practical ways of getting out, of understanding how they work, and understanding how to cope with it. Um, obviously, this is a situation where you're leaving, no matter what. Yeah. But um, but it also helps to really understand how to interact with them if you have to buy some time. Yes. Um, because that is just it's the hardest, hardest thing, and it's so much yeah energy to deal with. I know some people who yeah. are like telling me okay like I have only a hundred dollars in my bank account I need three grand or I need two grand yeah. in order to get out and it's probably gonna take me about six months so yeah. for the next six months I have to live with my abusive yeah. narcissistic husband yeah. or I have to live with my narcissistic mother or um, I'm yeah. living with a narcissistic roommate or something like that and so it's just like the worst yeah. <laughs> it's up and down. Uh, I wish I could sorry I wish I could just like send the people those money and be like just get the F out of there because like, it's up and it's up and down it's constantly up and down yeah cycles of drama this is saying like this has brought you into like a deep depression mm -hmm. like it's kind of sad like you're and you and you feel like you're the one who who kind of 
got entangled in this and like you're really upset because you, now you're it, like the truth is being revealed and remember when we first found out about narcissistic abuse how intense that was like how we were just like like you go through this stage of like shock and like mm. disbelief and like denial and then you get angry it's like the grieving process but, and you feel you feel like how could how could any person do this to someone oh it's just vile you just wonder it, 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 it's um, it sounds like a conspiracy theory it literally does because you're just like and it doesn't make any sense why somebody would go through that much trouble um to cause that much pain you in have to realize lives. it's an addiction though just yeah. how some people can be addicted to food and or, a lot of times or, it's, it's something they're completely unconscious but a lot of times addiction has to do with this sometimes they are addicted they're addicted to alcohol or yeah. addicted to drugs or addicted to food and so because of that anybody who has a hardcore addiction like that is narcissistic you literally, it makes, them it way, makes yeah. you narcissistic. So if, if like this person has a hardcore addiction to food and fast food and sugar and soda and stuff like that, that makes you narcissistic. If they're addicted to drugs or they're addicted to sex or they're addicted to alcohol um, or working out or eating disorder kind of stuff. I mean, I kind of want to be careful with that one because not everybody who has that one is always narcissistic. Yeah. Usually it's quite the opposite. But sometimes that kind of stuff can be narcissistic too, yeah. and so because they're always they're always chasing after this persona that they are when they're on it or when they have what they want, and it's yeah. just it becomes this whole fake thing. Yeah, it's and so it's hard because I know some of you guys are with people who are addicts, um, and like they're amazing when they're not like that, but then yeah. when they get back on it, like they go crazy, and like it's just hard, and like the whole time they're treating you narcissistically, and so. Um, it's really difficult. I mean, this is literally like one of like the devil card and this is the narcissism card. And I honestly, I want to read this to them. Can you just like, I'll be back. I'll, I'll talk. Yeah, just talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, the difficulty with uh, addictions and things like that with, with narcissists, uh, with narcissistics, bleh, with narcissists, um, difficulty is that they they make you cold they they make you kind of like uh desensitized to stuff and so thank you <laughs> because because everything is so up and down all the time you learn to expect that and you learn to actually uh how to cope with that really good your skills at coping with the the wacky unexpected uh everyday nonsense just all of a sudden you're just like that's normal there just becomes we go. your norm it becomes your norm and there's no there's no way to really gauge when you're actually having an up or or a downtime you you yourself personally your whole life becomes figuring out when this person is having an up or a yeah. downtime so this card is talking about a person who um, is charged with an un with an inhuman and unseen sentience mm. what does that mean you like describe that because that like really resonates with me but like I, I'm having a hard time putting that into words this is why he's here <laughs> uh, read it again. There, so this person is charged with an inhuman and unseen sentience you feel like pretty that's pretty much possessed I mean like, like you you pulled the the Kingfisher card right yeah and I feel like that was about um, this idea of of emotional like emotional deadness and yes. like dehumanizing kind of um, energy I feel like this person is is particularly cold yeah. and aloof and almost alien like yeah in how they respond to things um, they're like strange very strange um, they're also really good at faking emotions though like yeah. they're conscious enough to know that like yeah, they're yeah, different yeah. than other people and so they get they get used to like faking yeah like emotions and but, that's creepy but stuff always slips out i feel yeah the, know, the mask always slips with there's the narcissist like, um there's always like weird things that they'll say like almost like a slip it slipped out um yeah. weird things that they'll say and you'll be like what the what what'd you say <laughs> Um, yeah. if you ever actually call them out on it yeah. and and they'd be like oh uh, I, mean, I meant like this yeah. um, uh, and cover it up oh yeah but like I, I get the feeling based on that that this is uh, somebody who is really really out of touch with their humanity yeah. really out of touch with um, being being here as a human being present having committing regular, to this life committing to this body having emotional experiences yeah and this also says that this person feeds off of fear and panic 
with malevolent joy. Mm -hmm. That's what a narcissist does. I'm going to read that again. It's just terrifying. They feed off of fear and panic with a malevolent joy. They want you to fear them. Mm -hmm. And they provoke that fear out of you. And you might find your, them provoking fights with you just because they want to see that look of terror on your face or they want to see your face crying. It's like they have an addiction to like watching people cry. Have you noticed that? Like they want you to cry. Yeah, they, they, they it's like... It's creepy. They'll make a habit of putting themselves in places where there's lots of emotional like outbursts, fights, crying, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they're saying, um, drama. So our survival instinct was geared for fight or flight, but we've learned to rationalize our darkest fears and deal with these unknown dangers with intellectual insight. And I think what I'm thinking about when I read this is that your gut intuition has been telling you since day one, something's off and I need to leave. But in order to stay because of the children or because they're your parents or because it's your best friend or it's like your whole community or something, um, you intellectualize what happened to them. Like, oh, they're just depressed, which might be the case. A lot of narcissists are depressed. Oh, they just had a bad day at work. Oh, lots oh. of people are messed up. It's yeah. okay. Only blah, I blah. understand them and they we have like a special relationship and yeah. we have our own communication style and they're going to get better. They had they went through a lot in their childhood or like this happened to them. So it's like the thing is at the end of the day there is no excuse for abuse, you know? Right. Like I've been totally effed over my entire life, but I, I don't go out there and abuse people <laughs> like yeah. that. I've seen, yeah. I've met people on my path who went through horrible things in their life, but they're the nicest, kindest, most like centered person ever. And you, you have a choice when that kind of shit happens, if you're going to, um, you know, walk the path of darkness and become an abuser and become a narcissist, or if you're going to turn to the light. And so many narcissists were abused in their past, and that's kind of how they got that way. If you're wondering yeah. what happened, well, it's a chain reaction. The narcissist had someone who was who raised them or was around them who abused them who was also a narcissist. Yeah. And so sometimes in your own family, if you have narcissism, you can trace the narcissism back for generations. And oftentimes you can trace it back to a war. Somebody who came back from war with PTSD and kind of weird and, and being narcissistic after that because um, trauma can cause it as well. Yeah. Um, or some kind of big disaster or something that happened and yeah. Very interesting. Um, and so, let's see what else this says. Um, they're saying, if this situation has, has been left to decay or become unhealthy, now is the time to take control of your fears and deal with the insecurity with courage and integrity. Always become, always be aware that however threatening or difficult the situation is, you can only become stronger and more resilient from the, this experience. So this is going to help you become a lot stronger and more resilient. We also see another narcissistic card here with like this pit of snakes and like you trying to slither out of it. Eventually because of this, it's going to enable you to become a leader in your life because if you can pull up your inner strength and you can find a way out of this situation, you cannot imagine how strong it's going to make you. This like like I said, the whole narcissism thing is literally what gave me the strength to be able to speak on this channel and to give my all and and to follow my dreams and because because when you go through a big loss like that and then you come back from it your only choice you can only go up from there yeah. so you might be hitting rock bottom go getting out of these relationships but you can only go up from there rock yeah. bottom is the best place to be it's like you can only go up from there like yeah. i'm saying well yeah. and and uh, one thing too for everybody um for all the cards that we pulled um one two and three i feel two is is at the end of all of this um Think of how, if you spend some time just really going through what happened, how you may have actually uh, contributed to the situation once you've had some chance to really go through what happened and, and really kind of mourn the loss of that and, and recognize, you know, how, um, you know, how much pain you've gone through. After you've gone through that, because that's, that's more important <laughs> yeah. to deal with, um, if you can spend some time going through um, how exactly... Um, you may have missed signs at the beginning because um, you don't want to go through all the guilt tripping and all that you stuff don't do that right, right away. away. Yeah. Um, afterwards, after you'd had some chance to, to uh, yeah, really go through sense. it all, um, processing maybe how you might have attracted it, processing how um, how you may have really, how your feelings entering into the relationship, 
may have actually um, allowed you to become vulnerable to people like this person. Um, and that way, when you move on through life, as soon as you notice the signs, you, you have your boundaries. When you recognize that they're not responding to your boundaries, you leave. Yeah. Um, and, and you can go through life, through all your work, through your businesses, through your friendships, through your intimate relationships, finding real intimacy, real connections with people. Um, and and you can you can have friends. Yes. And, and they'll support you and love you and and you can you can do the same thing in in whatever you want to do for life. Your, your purpose. Yeah. You can help people. You know, get out of that because of your personal experience with it. It's it's a great skill set. Now that you've made it out. Now that you're gonna make it out. You know what I mean. So this says pay attention to the red flags, which goes along so well with that. You need to pay attention to the red flags with this person. The signs are cautioning you. I think a lot of you guys have picked this one are still on the fence about leaving. Um, and it could be because you're really nostalgic about the relationship you've had. Maybe you've been with this person for a long time. Maybe it's your family and you look back when you're little and you're like, wait, but like my parents had this awesome Easter egg hunt for me and they, they bought me this iPod I wanted and they, I have this good memory, but like, you gotta really think, you know, do the bad memories outweigh the good? Like, or like another warning sign is if you can't remember anything from mm. your childhood. I always tell people if you can't remember anything, it's probably because your mind blanked it all out because it was that traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is also friendship. Some of you guys have had such a long friendship, and maybe in the beginning it was good, but then you guys got older. This person got more narky, and and you're so invested. That's the thing is people yeah. have invested so much in their relationship, they're afraid to let it go. So, um, yes, you should leave this person. You will be leaving difficult times behind. Um, I see things working out really well for you. So, do you have anything else to say about narcissism? Uh, two things, I guess. Yeah, for um, these people. That I've been thinking about was, um, take a look at Love Hurts programming. Yeah. Um, and second thing, take a look at uh, codependency. Google, um, just go Google what's codependency. Yeah, take a look at what exactly that is because for for people who have a hard time leaving these relationships, um, it's also because there are things that you want in a relationship that you've been taught to want. And as a result, um, sometimes the almost, it sounds weird, but the chaos and the up and down of it is actually predictable for you. Yeah. It's actually safe and stable because you know what to do. Yeah, so for me, how this manifested was like in dating because I had known so much of the narcissism, I would date someone who was safe and someone who was stable and I'd break up after, with them after like a week or two because yeah. they were just boring. And then I kept going after the bad boys. Because it doesn't look like love to you. Yeah. It just doesn't look like it. You're like, uh, I, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. And it, you get terrified. Yeah. You get terrified when you're in a stable relationship and you just, you just don't want it because yeah. it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So take a look at those. If you're having trouble really making a decision, take a look at Love Hurts programming and take a look at codependency. And obviously. Love Hurts programming is. Oh, that's just. You just Google that. I thought that was a YouTube channel. Or I don't know. I just. Uh. Okay, so yeah, love Google her. it. Yeah, yeah, I, I've Googled that before. Um, as far as YouTube channels, check out Lisa A. Romano. Yeah. And um, Melanie Tonia Evans. Hers is the best. Hers is like kind of a spiritual um, approach to narcissism. So Melanie Tonia Evans. I'm not going to link this below. I'm sorry, I'm too lazy. <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> excuse me. I might add it later. He might add it. He's been helping me a lot with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Melanie Tonia Evans and um, Lisa A. Romano, their channels helped me so much with narcissistic abuse. Yeah, yeah. Like seriously, helped me so much. It, props to them. Props to them. If it wasn't for them, I don't know where the hell I'd be. Um, and then also- the angry guy. Yeah, I forgot his name. There was this one guy who was, yeah, he was like, oh, his, his channel's called Narcissist Survivor. And he is actually talking about narcissism and he's very angry in a lot of his videos. He had a narcissistic mom, but it actually helped me because I was trained that I wasn't supposed to be angry. Yeah. And so seeing this guy be really angry and talking about narcissistic abuse helped me. Gets like, you riled up. I was like, like, yeah, you know what? It is wrong. That was wrong. That was effed up. <laughs> I'm mad about but it. But it can also be triggering if you had a narcissistic <laughs> father or a narcissistic husband who yeah. like, he, his energy 
might be too triggering for you. Yeah. It might help some of you guys who need to see the anger. Others of you guys, you need to explain in a gentle way. That's why Lisa A. Romano and Melanie Tonia Evans are great because they're very gentle. Mm. But I do love Narcissist Survivors channel as well. It just it spoke to me. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't start there. I wouldn't yeah. start with his channel. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, that's it. If you guys want to talk more about narcissistic abuse or you need help or you need coaching through it or something, um, head over to promiseharmony.com slash services and you can set up a reading or a talk with me. And um, you can do the same for John. John Comment below. Yeah. Um, we'll put some emails. Um, I'll put my email in the description below also. Um, I have a little bit more free time than she does yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm answering some, you know, just some short questions. Sorry, I can't spend that much time for each individual person. Yeah. But um, just I'm answering short questions. So I'm going to put my email down below um, to also help out because I know this is a very personal thing for me and for for Rainbow. Uh, so comment, you know, uh, share your experiences. Yeah, talk. Feel free to talk about it because everybody who comments and talks about it, it's gonna help everybody who's watching be like, oh my God, there's other people out there that are going through this. Yeah, confirmation. And it's validation. Of the story. Yeah. Hearing other people's stories is all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, because all of a sudden you're not in that situation. You're reading somebody else's situation, and it makes complete sense that, to you. Yes, that was one of the most healing things for me. Is if you're thinking about leaving your narcissist, get out there, get in the community, and read other people's stories. Um, and so, yeah, that will really help you. Then you'd be like that asshole. Yeah. And then you realize, that, oh, the one I'm with, it's the same story. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I started researching narcissistic abuse and I started seeing my story over and over again, but told by different people. And I was mm -hmm. like, what the crap? All these people are going through this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free to leave your stories below. I'll heart them. I'll like them. I might not be able to com uh, reply to all of them. John will probably reply to a lot more than me. I'm just busy doing personal readings, but um, you can purchase a personal rating from me. If you purchase a basic rating for $44, I usually end up giving you extra time anyways. And John's readings are actually only 33. And so if you like are tight on money, but you really need to talk to somebody, you can talk to John. And especially if it's about narcissistic abuse, I'll probably just give you extra time. And I'm doing Skypes too. Yeah, so. we're doing Skypes, we're doing video messages, we're using the cards, we're sharing our, our light and um, our intuition with you guys and messages from spirit and whatnot. So thank you so much for all of your support And I'm glad that we finally got around to this topic and um, stay tuned this weekend on the channel There's going to be a lot of pick a card readings. So I'll see you guys then peace out <laughs>